you, Beth, for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anil Shah. I'm a nurse practitioner with Structural Heart Program. I'm really excited to be here today, and I'll be talking about mitral clip therapy, which is a percutaneous catheter-based approach in uh, treating mitral regurgitation. I have no disclosures. I'll be talking about the etiology, indication, and the incidence of mitral regurgitation. We'll be focusing on the COAPT trial that was recently approved by FDA, the referral process, and also the pre-procedure and post-procedure management. So with mitral regurgitation, age is a strong determinant. Um, prevalence is about 10% uh, US population, and it increases with age. And by 2040, it's expected that about 108 million people will have moderate to severe MR. As compared to aortic stenosis, I know a lot of us are familiar with TAVR um, aortic stenosis, but mitral valve disease is twice as common as aortic valve disease. And it's 14% um, of patients with aortic stenosis do get treated. However, in mitral regurgitation, only 1.5 patients percent patients get the treatment. And this untreated uh, severe MR is associated with increased morbidity and mortality because there's a lot of stress and load on the left ventricle, especially in the functional MR. And there is muscle damage, which leads to the dysfunction of the left ventricle, and then dilation of left ventricle, which increases uh, mitral regurgitation if it keeps going on and on with dilation. And the one-year mortality rate is up to 57%. Now, with mitral regurgitation, um, there is a blood flow. Mitral valve is, regulates the blood flow from left atrium to left ventricle. In mitral regurgitation, there is a leakage around the mitral valve. So there is a backward blood flow from left ventricle into the left atrium. There are two types of MR. First one is primary, which is degenerative MR. Basically, there's, uh, an, anatomically, the, there's a defect in the mitral valve itself, either with the leaflets, the cordae. And in secondary, which is the functional MR, the valve is functioning perfectly OK, but the left ventricle is a problem. There's dilation of the left ventricle, which leads to the, two, um, which leads to the leaflets being pulled apart from each other. And then there's incomplete coaptation between the leaflets, resulting in the leakage around the mitral valve. So this is a primary or degenerative MR. Right over here, which is the posterior leaflet, there is a prolapse. There is a defect in the leaflet itself, P2 prolapse. And on this specific echo, there is a chordae that is coming above the coaptation of the leaflet, and that's the posterior leaflet flail. And in secondary or functional MR, the leaflets are coapting. However, the left ventricle is dilated. And because of that, the leaflets are stretched, and they're pulled more apically. So talking about the mitral clip volume in the United States, um, it's increasing tremendously. Um, in 2018, the quarters one, two, and three, we have seen a great growth in mitral clip uh, procedures. And especially the COAB, which I'll be talking about shortly, was presented um, end of 2018. And this year, in 2019, we're definitely going to see even more volume with mitral clip procedures. It's continued to grow. We're using, um, lately we've been using the third generation MitraClip, which is the XTR. Um, the NTR is the second generation and the XTR is the third. With XTR, there is, it gives you an extra five millimeters of um, clip arm, which makes it easy to grasp the leaflets and our main goal is in reduction of MR. So the new device has been really helpful in achieving the outcomes that we indicate. I'm going to quickly go through this video a little bit, but I'm going to forward it until just because of the time. 
Objective MR, or primary, results from anatomical abnormalities of the valve itself. In most cases, the cordae connecting the mitral valve to the papillary muscle rupture or elongate, causing leaflet prolapse. MR is a progressive disease which, if left untreated, can initiate a series of events culminating in heart failure and death. Current guidelines recommend surgical mitral valve repair or replacement in severe MR patients. For MR patients for whom surgery is not an option, minimally invasive procedures are available. MitraClip is a unique, highly maneuverable transcatheter system for mitral valve repair. This procedure avoids cardiopulmonary bypass using minimally invasive venous approach and transeptal puncture to gain access to the left atrium. MitraClip's steerable guide catheter is introduced over a previously placed guide wire. The dilator is used to gradually advance the guide into the left atrium and the guide wire and dilator removed. The clip delivery system is advanced into the left atrium, positioning the clip above the regurgitant jet and perpendicular to the mitral valve plane. Inside the left atrium, the clip arms are open to 180 degrees and positioned perpendicular to the line of coaptation before crossing into the left ventricle. The clip is advanced into the left ventricle below the valve leaflets and retracted to grasp the leaflets. MitraClip grippers are designed to drop firmly into the clip arms, securely capturing both leaflets. Once the arms are closed, they create a double orifice within the mitral valve. Prior to clip deployment, echocardiographic imaging is used to assess procedural efficiency and leaflet capture. Prior to deployment, the MitraClip can be released and repositioned for optimal MR reduction. Once achieved, the clip is released and the full system retracted. In most cases, the transeptal puncture reseals itself and tissue ingrowth between the clip arms increases, facilitated by the polyester clip covering, which promotes healing to create a fibrous tissue bridge between the leaflets. And that's usually seen after about 90 the days of the procedure. The MitraClip procedure is a minimally invasive, highly effective treatment option for select patients with severe MR. Okay, we're gonna move on. So it is a venous approach, femoral vein, and then we do a transeptal puncture. And usually we don't do any additional procedures to fix the closure. The ASD is closed on its own. It heals eventually. So um, for primary or degenerative MR, FDA approved MitraClip in 2013. Um, this is where the, the defect is within the mitral valve itself. Recently, the COAP trial, which is Cardiovascular Outcomes Assessment of the MitraClip Percutaneous Therapy for Heart Failure Patient with Functional MR. This was presented um, in um, ACT last year, and in March of 2019, just a couple months ago, it was approved by FDA. Um, this was a randomized trial. Uh, one arm, as Dr. Kini Aino mentioned earlier, was guideline-directed medical therapy, and then the other arm also had the guideline-directed medical therapy. Along with that was MitroClip. The primary endpoints, all heart failure hospitalization through 24 months, and primary safety endpoint, freedom at 12 months from device-related complications. The secondary endpoints, very important about the all-cause uh, all mortality at 12 months, especially because this is heart failure population. And post-procedure, this was at 12 months, the echo post-procedure. As you can see, a majority of the patients received two clips. And even if they received one clip, three, two clips, or three clips, about 82% um, of these patients had mild MR post-procedure. And this was at 12 months. The primary effective endpoints, all hospitalization for heart failure within 24 months. This is a very important slide. As you can see, the, there is about great reduction in the mitroclip arm, about 47% reduction in rehospitalization for heart failure in the patients who received mitroclip. And we almost had to treat about three patients to prevent one hospitalization. That was the number needed to treat. And in all-cause mortality, 
uh, there was about 38% reduction in mortality, and also we had to treat six patients to save one life. And a lot of referring cardiologists refer these patients, especially functional MR patients, when they're very symptomatic, they have been hospitalized multiple times, and their quality of life is affected. So COAPT, um, getting these results from COAPT trial was very beneficial. Primary safety endpoint, as you can see, about 97% of the patients didn't have complications. And uh, the only ones major were single leaflet device attachment, and then the other one was LVAD. But LVAD was more uh, like a progression of the disease rather than it related to the mitroclip itself. But overall, a very safe procedure. And powered, uh, the secondary points were also superficial. So now, what's the current therapy for uh, MR? In primary MR, medical therapy is usually for symptom management. If a patient is fluid overloaded, the, you know, the doctor might put you on diuretics, but um, the actual valve needs to be fixed. In low to intermediate risk patients, it's usually surgical uh, mitral valve repair. But for if a patient is at a prohibitive risk or a very high risk for open heart surgery, then mitroclip is indicated. In secondary MR, again, guideline directed medical therapy first. If the patient has also um, a bundle branch block, we do consider CRT. And then um, percutaneous intervention in selected patients, again, based on the anatomy and the surgical risk score. Sorry. So now what makes these patients prohibitive risk for open heart surgery? So their surgical risk score should be greater than or equal to 6% for repair or greater than and equal to 8% for replacement. And then there are other comorbid conditions that would make a patient prohibitive risk for open heart surgery. Did I do this? Sorry. And yes, COAPT recently you know, showed a lot of good data for secondary MR, but again, when considering mitroclip for patients with secondary MR, our team here at Mansa and I were very looking at the echo results and images and LV dimensions and making sure this patient has been on guideline-directed medical therapy for a long time and has been uh, maintained on it and still being very symptomatic and, you know, again, looking at the TE and make sure the anatomy is favorable and then there's no uh, significant right-sided disease. So now, how does the referral process work here at Mount Sinai Hospital? So we do get um, our referrals from usually primary cardiologists or even PCP who had a baseline echo done or the patient was being symptomatic or had some hospitalizations for shortness of breath. So um, on the transthoracic, that was usually done at the cardiologist's office. If they had like moderate to severe MR, we usually get referred. Um, sometimes we do find um, by our interventional cardiologist um, uh, from structural heart office, uh, we do receive phone calls from the referring cardiologist as well. The number is there in case anybody has any patients or anything that they would want us to look into it. And inpatient referrals, a lot of heart failure patients who are here being managed by our heart failure team, uh, we do get referrals, especially the functional MR patients. Um, um, we do take that initial phone call. We uh, do a thorough chart review. We obtain clinical demographics. I have listed both the numbers there um, that could be reached out to our office. Uh, we make that initial phone call to the patient and family and explain the whole uh, pre-op uh, screening. Um, you know, the TEE patient needs, they need a consult with a cardiothoracic surgeon, um, they need consult with interventional cardiologist, and any additional tests that may uh, need if indicated. Those appointments are scheduled, and then the patient is seen in valve clinic. On the day of valve clinic, again, patient does get TEE. Um, we usually do do transthoracic first if they haven't had one recently, but most of our patients do come in with the baseline transthoracic echo. 
So after TEE patient is seen by uh, interventional cardiologists and cardiothoracic surgeons as a separate clinic visit, and then CT scan or PFT is only done if indicated to evaluate the anatomy. Heart team. Here at Mount Sinai, we do have a heart team discussion once a week for all our structural heart cases. Um, we have intervention cardiologists, cardiothoracic surgeon, referring physicians, research team, imaging specialists, cardiac anesthesia, and valve coordinators or the nurse practitioners. We do a thorough analysis of each case. We go through the diagnostic tests that were done on patients. We review images along with the whole team approach. We determine whether a patient is a candidate for mitral clip therapy or should be you know, a candidate for surgical um, mitral valve repair or replacement. And the main focus here is to make sure the re uh, referring physician is in this multidisciplinary um, team approach. And our, our focus is to get the new referral, and if everything is okay, if the patient is a, a, a appropriate candidate for mitral procedure, within two weeks of the referral, we, we are able to schedule the procedure dates. And again, main important piece is to notify the referring physician because they'll be the ones taking care of this patient long-term post-discharge. And post-procedure care patients do go uh, to a cardiac step-down unit. Um, and a transthoracic echo is done the day um, after the procedure, usually prior to discharge. Uh, patient is usually discharged within 24 hours or max 48 hours of the procedure. Um, Anticoagulation-wise, aspirin and Plavix. Plavix is usually discontinued after six months, depending on the bleeding risk. If the patient has been on warfarin, uh, then we do continue that along with aspirin. Um, and the main thing is uh, follow up with primary cardiologists within one to two weeks of discharge and then return back to the valve clinic for follow-up um, in one month with a repeat echo and then every year after that. And that's it. Thank you.